If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Welcome back to our exhibition, Women Take the Wheel, Fashion, Modernity, and the Automobile, 1900 to 1945. And in this episode, Jay Leno and I talk about what is required to run a car of this period because it wasn't all about fancy dresses and going out to balls, but as many people who have watched shows like Downton Abbey and watched as Branson the chauffeur did constant work whenever the car was parked, right. that was real life. Right. And in addition to these great costumes from the Vanderbilt women from the Newport Historical Society, we also have the clothes of a Vanderbilt chauffeur here in the back, this wonderful maroon wool. And these are practical clothes because they did a lot of hard work. Right. Jay, what would, what would it take to run a 1916 simplex crane Berlin well, like I've this? Well, I've got one of these, you know, the simplex, you know, the, the auto industry has always been chaotic. It's boom or bust. You're only as good as the last car. It was Mercedes simplex. It, now it's simplex crane out of Bridgeport, Connecticut, they figured, uh, Crane stepped in. I don't know whether it came from Crane Plumbing or one of those, but money came from somewhere, and they were going to take over. And this engine is, is basically a copy of a Silver Ghost Rolls Royce. It was an American version of that. And the idea when you opened the hood, you'd see brass, and you'd see bronze, and you'd see polished aluminum. Ooh, wow, all that kind of stuff. I mean, look at these massive connect. This looks like the like the basement of an apartment building in the Bronx with these big connectors and giant fuses on the other side. I mean, this was a, a massive machine. Uh, look at this carburetor. It looks like a, a toilet bowl. It's so enormous. But this is a powerful car. Uh, you know, the idea was you could go all the way down to five miles an hour in top gear and then pull away without, you know, you know clutch or snatch or clutch snatch or any of that kind of stuff, you know. So uh, these are Im impressive cars. Uh, what kind of regular maintenance was required to run a car? Well, like you this? had stuff you had to do weekly. Uh, you, you were asked to change the oil sometimes every 500 miles to 700 miles. Don't forget there was really no oil filtration system. Oil is not what it is today. We don't really get sludge in cars anymore where condensation, it builds up and you gotta get, scrape the pan and all that. But back in the day, you had to do that. And the chauffeur's job was a full-time job. He would drive for two, three hours a day and spend the next eight hours servicing the car. I mean, when you look at, well, you know, it's interesting because cars are always powerful and fast. It's really the maintenance and the braking and the handling where all the sophistication started to come in. For example, this only has two wheel brakes. There's no brakes in the front. Look how heavy this thing. This thing has to weigh 5,000 pounds. So my God, going down a hill in this, uh, you take your life in your hands. So you had to have someone who understood automobiles and how they work. And you have, when you put this up on a lift, you have, I would guess, 75 chassis duplication points mm -hmm. where you're supposed to Going this is here. metal on metal. There's no That's rubber right. bushings or no. nylon. and No, none of that. None of that. So you had to lubricate those all the time. I'm trying to find some. You have, some have just, so you flip up a cap and you fill it with oil and you shut it and the oil then seeps down. I mean, where these were parked in the garage, if you saw oil on all four corners on the ground, oh good, you know, the guy was doing a good <laughs> job lubricating the car. Not that, like today where we don't want puddles to form under our cars. Right, but that's another thing. You know, I've got a, uh, a, a uh, what is it, a Popular Mechanics article from 1963 on how to dispose of old oil. It says, dig a hole in your backyard, put gravel in the bottom, and then pour the, the excess oil from your car over the gravel. It will filter clean and go back to the earth. 1963, I mean, people are still dumping oil in the ground. Uh, I mean, so it, it's, it's, it's pretty bizarre uh, yeah, when you think of that, but there was just a lot to do on this car. When you look at the owner's manual for one of these, it is really an owner's manual. It's not, now it's, you know, do not drink contents of battery and do not, <laughs> do not eat, uh, and, and go to, to your dealer. And how to choose things on the infotainment system. Right, right, but no, no maintenance because it, oh, God forbid you touch your own car, but you were supposed to be involved in the automobile. 
when you have one of these. Because this was, it was like the back of a watch, how complicated they were. Now, I know I've watched you come in after a drive in your 1916 uh, Pierce Arrow. And I think you get as much pleasure once it's back after the drive, putting up in the lift, and doing all of the oiling and, and checking the, well, the It's the fun to do that. I, I mean, I enjoy it. It's interesting to see. And if you do it as prescribed, the car will last forever. In fact, even more so than a modern car. Because on old cars, things break. On modern cars, which are all computers and electricity, they degrade. Electricity degrades. It starts out like this. And then just through no fault of time, it just becomes and then you're not making connection. And you can't figure out by looking at it what has even degraded. You know, with something like this, if there's oil coming out of that hole, okay, you have a crack there. Or if it's not pumping, then you pull the oil pump, aha, a teeth are broken off the oil pump. Whatever. The bracket on a hose is loose, yeah. then you know what's yeah. happening. I mean, finding this in a barn in, in the 50s or 60s after sitting for 40 years is much easier to get started than finding a car from the 90s now, because you just, I mean, you've got electronic box. It looks fine. How do I know, is this the reason it's not running? I don't know. All I can do is replace it. I can't fix it, you know. These, uh, eminently rebuildable. You can, you, the, the, in fact, I believe this car came with a lifetime guarantee. For the life of the car, it was guaranteed. Of course, the company was out of business in a few years later, but you know, that Nonetheless. was a guarantee, yeah. And speaking of the life of the car, this car is also very important for this exhibition in this museum because this car has a great local history. It was bought new by the Agassi family, it lived in the Castle Hill Estate, which is now a beautiful hotel and restaurant here in Newport, and remained in the family until the 1990s. Wow. So this is an astonishing uh, historical piece and has been refurbished uh, once in its lifetime, but has never been totally apart for a restoration. So it really shows the character of what a car like this is like, and very, very typical of what a family here in Newport would have used for transportation. Yeah, and you probably went about 30 miles an hour in this car, which seems ridiculously slow now, but when everybody else is going 22 or 24 miles an hour, well, you're more than keeping up with, with traffic, you know. And in a level of fine. comfort that certainly outmatched the last of the horse-drawn carriages. To have this kind of enclosed comfort, the smoothness of this engine on these incredibly beautiful roads around here must have been absolutely magical. Yeah, and you know, but when you say right up to the 1990s, that was 30 years ago. I mean, time moves so quickly, it's, it's you know, you go, wow. You know, uh, when I was doing The Tonight Show, uh, an intern came up and said, oh, Miss Leno, uh, you, you have antique cars, I like antique cars. Oh, you got any antique cars? I said, what do you got? He goes, oh yeah, I got a 91 Miata. And I kind of laughed, then I really, he was born in like 89. So I was like, oh, I, that is an antique car to him. <laughs> so it all depends where you are, you know? I mean, this, this car was, I, I can remember as a kid thinking, I wonder if he'd like to drive a hundred year old car someday. Wow, that's unbelievable. Well, now you can do it all the time like this. You could get in and drive this, but I, I contend this is easier to get running than a modern car that's been sitting for 25 or 30 years. And that's the magic of exhibitions like this and what we do here at the Audrain Museum. Keeping history alive and vibrant and bringing it to the road yeah. with people like Jay Leno. Thanks for joining us.